Welcome to another episode of The Geeky Bride. Okay, so the first thing people will ask once you tell them you're engaged, after they say congratulations, they will ask you, well, actually they'll ask you to see your ring. <laughs> Side story here, I got engaged, Jim proposed to me in Japan on a snowy mountaintop in Kyoto a year ago, uh, last February. And he didn't have a ring, and that didn't really matter because it was romantic and spontaneous and beautiful. And if I keep talking about it, I'm gonna cry, so I'll stop. But um, I wrote a blog post, which I'll link below, along with two blog posts about my rings. And yes, rings, because that night in Kyoto, he bought me a 500 yen, $5 ring with a heart on it. And I wore that till I got this one, which is a mine cut diamond. It's over 100 years old. It's family heirloom of his, um, I think his great grandmother. And it's never been an engagement ring before, but it is now, and I love it, and it's so amazing. Okay, so the other question that they'll ask you as soon as you say you're engaged is, when's the date? So you may have a date in mind, but that may not necessarily be the date you actually end up getting married because of the way these things go. First of all, you have to decide what kind of wedding you want to have. Is it going to be really big? Is it going to be really small? In a church? Outside? Abroad? In City Hall? In Las Vegas? Are you inviting your whole family? Are you inviting only friends? Are you inviting a very small amount of people? Are you inviting everybody you've ever met? You have to decide. Regardless of what it is, that's the first decision. Then you find your venue based on the amount of people you want to invite. Then. You pick a date based on the availability of your dream location. <laughs> um, and you're going to have to make compromises along the way. I had to make a compromise with the venue because one of my original things that I really wanted was the ceremony and the reception to be in the same location so people don't have to travel between the two. And that didn't happen because we found an amazing venue for ceremony very beautiful something that was exactly like what both of us were thinking of they just unfortunately don't do receptions so we had to compromise and find a reception place that was close but big enough to hold, hold everybody one thing that has helped me out and I wish I had gotten it sooner is this planner I was browsing around YouTube and I really love arts and crafts and stickers and washi tape and like pens and like, you know making things with my hands and so I sort of stumbled across this subculture on YouTube of people obsessed with Erin Condren life planners and like decorating them and like showing you how they plan their day. I thought it was really odd at first but then I just went down the rabbit hole and decided I had to have one and lucky for me they have a wedding planner version of it which you can customize the front. Well, they have these really cool like what to do six to four months before, four to two months before the week of, places to write down all of your vendor information. And it's expensive, that's the thing. Erin Condren is expensive and it's more than I ever thought I would be willing to pay for like a planner. But um, I got a $10 off thing, which uh, there's a link below if you want $10 off. I'll get $10 to spend on something, full disclosure. I actually did an unboxing of this. <laughs> um, I know, like, so, so strange, but uh, that's all my second channel if you're interested in, in a more in-depth review of this, or at least, you know, to see what it looks like. I just wanted to call out a few people who left comments. Uberwern, Uberwen, gotta help me pronounce that username, um, said she's new to my channel and her advice is to let other people take the responsibility of the day so that you don't have to worry about the details and you can just enjoy it. And I think that's a really good piece of advice. I am a little worried on my wedding day that I'm gonna be like worried about like the centerpieces and the this and the that. So I'm going to try my best to just, you know, let, let other people worry about it. Another comment I wanted to call out is from, it's from Joanna uh, from IggleTube. International Geek Girls Pen Pal Club. Her advice is to set aside a few minutes for you and Jim to have a moment away from everything else. And we actually are gonna have that moment in the car ride from the ceremony to the reception. It'll just be the two of us. And at least as far as the plans are now, that's what's gonna happen. So yeah, I think that'll be a really good time, a really good bit to get away. And lastly, my roommate from college, Jen, um, 
says that she was actually the same and on her wedding cake they had a Mickey and Minnie honeymoon cake topper. So I'm not sure what kind of dessert topper Jim and I are going to have, if any. That's something to think about. Maybe I could incorporate some kind of nerdy thing like an Aquaman and a Sailor Moon. Okay, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for another episode of this sometime soon and I will see you here next Wednesday with another video. Okay, bye-bye. Meow, meow, meow.